So in the summer, um, you know, Michigan was the priority. So we had two of our rigs out there. We ended up bringing a third rig. Um, and at Tamarack, we had um, two physical rigs, but we only had a skeleton crew of, of one. Um, and so we were doing directional drilling. We were getting these holes set up to do directional drilling. It's pretty involved. You're setting wedges. There's a lot of tripping, so it takes a lot of time. But you make that time up uh, on the back end when you're drilling. Uh, we can also only get one person for the directional drilling. Uh, so we were limited to essentially 12 hours. But because there's so much downtime on directional drilling, it worked out pretty well that we could move that crew between the two rigs. So it was a pretty efficient program, but um, it does it does take a fair bit of time. Um, what's different now is because Michigan has wound down for the season, um, all three rigs are coming back to Tamarack. So uh, they're, they're all set up right now. The crews are coming back shortly, but we'll start drilling uh, in the vault zone with the full complement of you know what we have in house, um, and I think uh, that should, that's where the excitement is for me is getting three rigs turning on these these targets. Um, I think it's really exciting, <clears throat> um, mostly because it's it's very different. We don't have boronite at Tamarack, and we don't we especially don't have calcasite. Um, those are two kind of really high copper minerals. Um, but in all the holes that we drilled in the vault zone, we always see it. Um, and, and sometimes it's just small veins. Um, the veins are getting larger. Like in this last press release, I've got a picture of me holding a really chunky uh, vein of, of calcasite. Um, it's a really abnormal thing to have in these systems. I've talked to a lot of global experts on, on nickel. No one that I've talked to has really seen this assemblage before outside of maybe microscopically, but something that you can hold in your hand, definitely not. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, Calcopyrite, which is what we typically have, has about 35% copper in it. Um, boronite is in the 60s. Calcasite is about 79% copper. So something is adding copper um, to this area um, and resulting in a different mineral assemblage than what we're used to. Um, I don't know that it could come from itself. I, I think there might be a bigger picture play here. And we've seen it, you know, about 200 meters um, between holes so far. So it's a pretty large area um, where we're seeing this copper enrichment. So hypogene enrichment, I think, is is very much on the table here. Yeah, so that drill hole we drilled, uh, it's about 50 meters to the north. Um, it is a 2016 hole that we extended just to get down to that zone, because a lot of these holes, historical, didn't get that deep. Um, and what we're seeing in the borholium is two things. One is we see the high conductive plate uh, that is associated with the 563 mineralization. Um, but then we also see a plate that persists through the entire length of the borehole from that point down. And when you model that, it, it, it shows up as kind of a vertical or steeply dipping uh, plate. When we think about like the model of what this could be, at Tamarack, the mass of sulfide always sits outside of the CGO, uh, where the CGO has come in, it's heated up the country rock, partially melted those sediments, and created an environment where that mass of sulfide can kind of push its way through those hot, melty sediments. Um, I think in, in the vault zone, this is kind of what we're seeing. And this might be what this kind of lower conductivity borholium anomaly is showing. This could be kind of the pathway um, going down. So, you know, in the vault, it's kind of the same thing. We're seeing near the CGO, but outside of the CGO is where we're hitting these massive sulfides. And now I think we have a pathway um, for that drainage model as the sulfides drain down, they're looking for that kind of melted sediment zone to continue their, their downward progress and push their way down. Um, so I think going forward, um, this is going to be an area that we want to drill some deeper holes, run borehole EM, and, uh, and see you know, what pools can we find on the way down. Yeah, so the plans for the vault zone, um, you know, we're just getting the third rig set up. Uh, we'll get it crewed next week. And then um, basically, the intent is to drill up the vault zone, starting with the, the smaller step outs, so these 10, 15 meter step outs, focusing on the 563 area, uh, focusing on the 565, and then the 250 area. So those three areas where we've already hit the mass of sulfides, now we want to basically start delineating those, drill to the north, south, east, west, um, and start expanding them kind of step by step. 